Let's get started learning the language of the U.S. clinical setting. American clinical culture is characterized by focus on the needs of patients and the preservation of life. Teamwork and efficiency are highly valued. The expression, time is of the essence, describes the U.S. clinical setting and the language which has evolved. The demand to communicate efficiently has produced a multitude of clinical abbreviations. These abbreviations are said quickly and are exceedingly difficult for newcomers to the clinical area to understand. A second challenge for new healthcare providers is the use of scientific language seen in long, multisyllable terms such as hypothermia or endoscopic. First, let's consider abbreviations. How can you make sense of abbreviations when you hear them for the first time on a clinical unit? It's helpful to recognize the structure of abbreviations. Most clinical abbreviations are used in two forms. They are either shortened words or phrases, or they are first letters of the initials of words or syllables. Sometimes combinations of syllables and letters are used. Let's examine how an abbreviation is formed by shortening. I will use examples that will be presented again in the weekly interactive learning modules. The term vital signs refers to the assessment of body temperature, pulse, respirations, and blood pressure. Doctors and nurses commonly shorten the words vital signs to the abbreviation vitals. They shorten the phrase even more when it is written using lowercase vs. In this course, you will be learning about many other terms which are abbreviated by shortening. The second common form of abbreviation is using letters of a term or syllables in a word. The very common abbreviation BP for blood pressure illustrates the use of the first letters of two separate words, B for blood and P for pressure. Another example is the abbreviation MI for myocardial infarction. A technical name for the use of first letters is initialing. In this course, we use the phrase, the first letter rule, for this method. Abbreviations using the first letter rule commonly identify diseases and diagnostic tests. For example, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is COPD, or liver function tests are LFTs. In most cases, these letters are pronounced separately as letters. Some abbreviations do not follow the first letter rule. Sometimes key letters or key syllables form the abbreviation. For example, hypertension is abbreviated using HTN. Or we see the term atrial fibrillation abbreviated as either AF or AFib. Sometimes the first letters form an easily pronounceable word. For example, acquired immune deficiency syndrome becomes AIDS, or severe acute respiratory syndrome becomes SARS. These abbreviations that fit together to form a word are called acronyms. Understanding these principles of structure of abbreviations will help you to more quickly learn the many abbreviations used in U.S. clinical settings. The second challenge for those new to clinical settings is the long scientifically oriented medical terms used in conversation and for reporting. Each of the syllables or segments of these words are derived from Latin or Greek words and have specific meanings. A long medical word can be decoded by learning the meaning of each of the segments. You will learn more about how to decode long medical terms as you progress through the course. 
Now we have saved the most important key to understanding a new term or abbreviation until the last. Always ask, what is going on here? What is this situation about? A short way to say this is, consider context. For example, if you enter the nurse's station and the conversation is, we need to admit Mr. Smith. And then the nurse looks at you and says, would you get his vitals? You can be pretty sure that this is a request for assessment of vital signs. Your thoughts might jump to, is she saying something about vitality? Or maybe vital organs? But if you consider the context, it is clear that a newly admitted patient needs evaluation of vital signs. The safety of your patient is always a primary guiding factor. When the use of a term or abbreviation may have consequences for patient welfare, be certain before you proceed. We will suggest ways to clarify what you hear and see later in the course. Let's get started by learning more about terms and abbreviations related to vital signs.